I really shouldn't be here. Uh, I should probably be dead. I've been raised by a family where both my parents are alcoholics. My father was abusive. My first childhood memory was one of being abused. And I grew up a very angry and alienated young man. I was just mean. Mad at the world. So I packed a few things into a backpack and started walking. And I became homeless. But not the kind of homeless guys you see on the street. You didn't see me. I was the invisible homeless. I didn't want to be around people ever again. I just, I had no faith in them and less in me. And I probably would have stayed that way for much longer. But it got cold. It got so cold I thought, if I go to sleep at night, I can't stay warm enough in this sleeping bag to keep from dying of exposure. And I asked a question, looking up at the stars, clear night, no lights around, you've never seen so many stars. I asked a question of a God that I not only didn't believe in, but I was an enemy of in every way that you could be. And I got an answer. And the answer was so simple. He just said, no, you need to come out of these woods. And I didn't know it was Sunday. I had no idea what day of the week it was when I came walking out of those woods. And I walked up and I sat down on the steps and a car pulled up with this elderly couple. And they said, are you here for church? And I said, yes, I am. And I sat there and I waited till the end of the sermon. And the minister made a call for people to come down front. And I went. Now, those poor folks at that church didn't really know what to do with me. Here's this uh, fuzzy, stinky, dirty, hairy guy showed up at church and says he would like to be a Christian. Now, that they can handle. But where do you put him and what do you do with him? They put me up there at the mission for, I guess, seven months. Um, by that time, I was pretty much back on my feet. I was able to get a room in a rooming house. I was earning enough money with my drawings to be able to pay my rent and feed myself. And that's when I met David Spickard. Well, Don and I began to develop our relationship and he expressed an interest in being a part of the Jobs for Life class. What was interesting to me as I was walking with him is to see his fear, really his fear of stepping out. Don would spend his days alone in his room in a rooming house in downtown Raleigh and he would spend his entire day drawing. And those drawings were fantasy, sci-fi pictures that he would draw with incredible detail. But that was the way he spent his day. He'd spend it as alone in his room, still not seeing anyone. And David became not only my friend, but became my mentor. He was everyone's favorite. Everyone became Don's champion. And before the program was finished, I had a job. He ended up getting employed with the art supply company that he would get his supplies. Jobs for Life taught me that one of the ways we can worship God is by the work that we do. Where I'd failed in my other marriages, this one is effortless. We have the same taste, the same sense of humor, and the same commitment and drive in not only artwork, but we share a real passion for working with young people who are homeless, who don't have a family support group, and don't fit into the system and would fall through the cracks. I've gone from being homeless and hateful to finding a way to forgive my parents and have a relationship with them to being an entrepreneur and self-employed, <laughs> still a Christian, still love God. 
I feel like I'm a fixer-upper project for him. But then maybe that's where he does some of his best work.